السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه Dear viewers, we welcome you once again to a new episode of the Prophet's Prayer In a sound hadith collected by Imam Muslim, may Allah have mercy on him Uthman ibn Affan, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Whenever any prescribed prayer is due, any Muslim who does wudu properly and perfects its khushu'a and its bound down, all the sins which you've committed before this prayer will be expiated and will be forgiven as long as he avoids the major sins. And this offer is applicable and is effective forever. As long as the person is alive. A beautiful virtues of offering the prayer. But with the conditions the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. Of perfecting the tahara, the khushu'a and each move of the salah. Unfortunately, many Muslims pray and they do not gain those virtues of the salah. Why? They do the actual physical activities of the salah but without khushu'a, without fulfilling the conditions which would make the salah valid and accepted. For instance, Al-Imam Al-Bukhari tells us a very interesting story. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda said that once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam entered the masjid, a man entered the masjid as well. He prayed, then he came towards the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he greeted him. As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned his salam and said to him, Go back and pray, for you have not prayed yet. So the man went back and he prayed again. And he came once again and gave salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He returned his salam and said once again to him, Go back and pray, for you have not prayed yet. That was actually repeated three times. Until finally the man said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, By the one who sent you with the truth, I do not know any better than that. Teach me. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed him as follows. He said, Whenever you stand up in prayer, make takbir. Then recite as much as you can recite of the Quran. Then make ruku'ah. حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ رَاكِعًا Bow down until you trunk well and you are at ease while you are in the position of ruku'ah. Then stand up until you're completely straight and until you are at ease while you're standing. Then prostrate حَتَّى تَطْمَئِنَّ سَاجِدًا Until you trunk well and find tranquility and you are at ease while in sujood. And then do likewise throughout your entire prayer. The Prophet ﷺ taught us in this hadith that the prayer is not just physical activities, but the heart, the mind, everything have to be involved while you are praying. I mean that it's not just offering the salah, but fulfilling all the conditions and the requirements which would make the salah valid. So that would gain the virtues which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for one who offers the salah according to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once the Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by two graves. And he remarked saying to his companions that the dwellers of these two graves are being punished. He said about one of them, he's being punished because كَانَ لَا يَسْتَبْرِئُ مِنْ بَوْلِهِ he used not to clean up after urination. This is very serious sin. Because anything will be built on that is invalid. If one does not perfect washing after urination or defecation, answering the call of nature, especially those who tend to, uh, to urinate while standing, of course, no matter how many times you make wudu, the wudu is invalid. And accordingly, the salah is invalid as well. There are a lot of common mistakes depend on the cultures and people's customs. 
practice here and there. We're trying, inshallah, in, in the next few episodes to cover many of those mistakes so that we would avoid them, inshallah, in our prayers. Uh, some of those common mistakes are being practiced before the salah, not only during the salah. For instance, the issue of facing the qibla. Many people belittle that and they take it easy. While if you do not face the qibla properly and you make your maximum effort to adjust the direction towards the qibla, the salah will be invalid. Another thing, it is mandatory and a condition for the validity of one's prayer to cover the awrah. People take that with ease. Covering the awrah is not just being dressed up, but is to dress up properly. And the issue of hijab for women or covering the awrah for men is not just to cover the body, but to wear white clothes that do not reveal the details of one's body. The Prophet ﷺ warned women against a practice which will be common before the Day of Judgment that the Prophet ﷺ have not seen during his life, that women, he will be dressed up, yet they are naked. Women who wear see-through, or they wear clothes very, very tight, revealing the details of their bodies. Same thing with men wearing tight jeans, etc. That would, of course, affect the validity of the prayers, and the prayer will be invalid. Another thing, and many people take it easy, and they wear what's known as lockered low-cut jeans or uh, low shirts or t-shirts. So when they come to make ruku'ah or when they come to make sujood, what happens? Is that a part of their awra will be uncovered. Of course, that would affect the validity of the prayer. Going back to the issue of tahara and perfecting one's wudu. Uh, many of the sisters like to adorn themselves for their husbands so that they wear makeup. That's perfectly fine. But some of the makeup which contains waxes or it has uh, some body such as the nail polish. That prevents the water from reaching to the nails. And accordingly, no matter how many times you make wudu, if the water does not reach to the skin or to the nails, the wudu is incomplete and accordingly it's invalid. Then anything you perform which requires wudu is invalid because at the first place that you have not performed wudu. Many people while performing hajj and umrah after uncovering the right shoulder is the tradition of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu this tradition is known as al itibah and it is to be done only in the first arrival tawaf. What happens? They rush to offer sunnah to tawaf afterward. And they leave the right shoulder uncovered. That, of course, wrong practice. The Prophet ﷺ prohibited one from just praying in one izar, one clothes, without having any clothes that cover his shoulders. So a person should not only cover, but should cover properly. And understands that he or she are standing before Allah the Almighty. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there are certain things that the Prophet ﷺ recommended for us to do and certain things the Prophet ﷺ prohibited us from doing. He prohibited one who's praying from folding the sleeves or the pants or anything while in the salah that is prohibited. He commanded us if one is going to pray to take a sutra or a screen. Belittling this can ruin one's prayer because uh, that would distract him. The sutra, it's not only to prevent people from crossing before the musalli, but also prevent a shaitan himself from crossing before the musalli and distracting his attention. And it would restrain his eyesight so that it would not go beyond the screen. We talked about the importance of praying uh, in a place which does not have any distractions. Using a prayer rug or a carpet or a mat that's full of designs and decorations is this like it simply would distract one's attention in the salah and he would just be focused on the drawings and the paintings in the salah once the prophet sallallahu alaihi while praying aisha may allah be pleased with her she had a curtain hung somewhere at her house and the curtain had some paintings 
once the Prophet ﷺ finished the prayer, he ordered her to remove it right away. And he said that, it distracted me. It distracted my attention in the prayer. I don't want to see it again. And once again, the Prophet ﷺ was given an outer garment, which have some drawings. Not drawings as pictures, but it was designed. So after the Salah, the Prophet ﷺ got rid of it and said that it distracted my attention in the Salah. The person before the Salah must make sure that the spot is clean, his body is clean, his clothes are clean, and befitting the requirements which would be required for the validity of the Salah, of Satr al awra and so on. As far as for women, the Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith that Allah would not accept the prayer of an adult woman who reached the puberty age without a khimar. The ulama actually differ whether a woman should cover her feet during the salah or not. To get out of this dispute, it will be safer and better for any woman to cover up completely during the salah, even covering her feet by wearing the proper socks, or if she's wearing a long jilbab, which would cover her feet as well. A woman should be covered from head to toe, except for the face and the hands during the prayer. A man should not wear, uh, should not just pray without wearing a shirt, or uh, uh, wearing an undershirt, which would show his shoulders, that is prohibited. Not only that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يا أيها الذين آمنوا خذوا زينتكم عند كل مسجد أو you who believe take your adornment at every masjid every place of worship that were commanded while going to pray to dress nicely to dress the best of what we have to smell nicely to appear nicely because you are going to converse with Allah the Lord of everything that exists if we do that we'll be able to attain khushua and we'll be able to enjoy our salah. In the next episodes, inshallah, we'll be talking about the actual common mistakes which many people practice out of ignorance during the salah, beginning with the niyyah and ending with a tasleem. I'd leave you here. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit all of us from all of that. May Allah bless you and please stay tuned. See you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.